Ladies and gentlemen, this is Kazakhstan. Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Now I've only gone and went to Kazakhstan. Yes, that's right, Kazakhstan. It's very hard for me to believe after the 18 months that we've had that I would be going to Kazakhstan in Central Asia. My first time in Central Asia. I've heard loads about the country. I've actually got friends there and you'll see my Google Maps has tons of pins of all the things that I've wanted to do there. So it's been on my list for a long, long time. So to say I was excited was an understatement. I was going with We Are Komodo, a fantastic influencer agency, and we were there as guests of the Nurselton Foundation, which I will tell you a little bit more about shortly. If you're new here, please consider subscribing and you can also hit the bell notifications for my new videos. Drop any questions in the comments and like this video if you're enjoying it. So let's start with some interesting facts about Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan is the ninth biggest country in the world and it's the biggest landlocked country in the world. It spreads over both Europe and Asia and is officially classified as both. Almaty is not actually the capital of Kazakhstan. That was moved to Astana in 1997 and two years ago that's now been renamed to Nurseltown. So Nurseltown is the capital. Islam is the most commonly practiced religion but Kazakhstan is a secular state which means it's not subject or bound to any religious rule. And finally, Kazakhstan has a rich and fascinating history. It became independent from the Soviet Union in 1991, and in December of this year, will celebrate its 30th birthday. Happy birthday, Kazakhstan. And like I mentioned earlier, I'm here working with We Are Komodo, a fantastic influencer agency, and also here as guest of the Nurselton Foundation. The foundation was set up in the name of the first president, Nurseltown, who guided the country through 30 years in power from the fall of the Soviet Union to now where the country is flourishing and doing very well. The foundation was set up to help communities, schools and tourism, hence why we came. We were flying in of one city and out of another, which meant we are going to see two fantastic destinations, starting off in Turkestan and ending up in Almaty. So Turkestan. Well, it's one of Kazakhstan's ancient cities, but it is also very much up and coming and new. All the hotels and the buildings are very new and it currently has approximately 200,000 people, but they estimate within five to 10 years that will grow to 1 million. However, it is known for its fantastic history, its ancient uh, civilizations and its architecture. And our first stop was the mausoleum. Yes, the incredible mausoleum of Koja Ahmed Yazawi. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. This was set up in his honor back in 1389, and it is stunning. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and it has many purposes. Firstly, it's a mosque, it's a meeting hall, and a place of burial, and obviously a place of worship. It was built in the name of Yazawi because he built a bridge between the Islamic faith and the beliefs of the Central Asian countries. Now, that brief explanation doesn't do it justice, and I encourage you to have a look or visit the mausoleum yourself to find out a bit more, but that's why he's considered a holy man and a saint. There are also a number of ancient ruins and ancient cities surrounding Turkestan, and we went to the Otra Hill Fort. Now, it just blows your mind how old and how far these date back and their part they played in the old Silk Road. The Otra Hill Fort itself used to be an archaeological site, but it's just been opened up to visitors so you can now go and see it for yourself. Other than that, Turkestan is very up and coming. There's plenty of nice restaurants and entertainment, and I encourage you to take a visit. But our next stop was Almaty. Now for me there is something magical about a city that is surrounded by snow-capped mountains and there's nothing like that plane ride in. I encourage you to get a window seat where you can just see the mountains and the city right in front of you. I also find that when I visit a city for the first time, I either feel instantly connected or I don't and that first impression is rarely wrong. Well in Almaty I definitely felt it and I was really excited to be there. We have arrived in Almaty, it's great to be here, it's great to finally be here, I feel like I've wanted to come here for ages. I'll be making a video about the three main things that I did that I recommend you do. Of course I didn't have loads of time so I didn't do everything, it's not comprehensive but check out that one, look out for it, it's going to be coming soon. But otherwise Almaty I recommend that you go and take a little tour, take a walk around the city to get a feel for it, it's very safe. Uh, it's very welcoming, the people are lovely. We went to the First President's Park to have a wander around there and see the lovely green open space and then we went up the Cock Toby cable car. Now that is a brilliant way to get a feel for the city, to get a view of how vast it is, to see it for yourself. I recommend you go up there during the afternoon and stay there for sunset. 
There's nothing quite like having a mulled wine, enjoying the sunset and appreciating where you are in the world. And then for the adrenaline junkies, you've got to do the toboggan. Fucking hell! <laughs> fuck me, this is massive as fuck! Oh shit! It was really scary actually, I'm pretty sure it felt like we were going to come off at one point. Of course we didn't, it's very safe. Uh, so give that a go. And then the other things that we did in Almaty were we went out to the Charon Canyon National Park. What a day, I'll talk more about that in my next video, but just have a quick look at these stunning views. That's a day trip you have to do. All right, today's been the day I've been most excited about. We've come to Charon Canyon. This is unbelievable. One of the most beautiful places I've ever been. We've come down in four by fours all the way from Almaty. We also went to the Shimbulak Ski Resort. Of course it's summer, but there's plenty of hiking and other things that you can do uh, at the resort. And it's just stunning. It just blows my mind to go from desert style scenery and a canyon to beautiful mountains that make you feel like you're in Yosemite National Park. And finally, you cannot go to Almaty without going to one of the stunning lakes. We went to Big Almaty Lake and on the way stopped at the Aisai Visitor Center. Now both are in the Iliatu National Park and that again is a beautiful area. Honestly, it feels like a little hidden gem. Yosemite vibes again. The Visitor Center has multi-functions. It's a cafe, it's an educational center, it's a workspace with some of the best views I've seen for co-working. And you can also go glamping there, so I recommend stopping there. And then of course the lake, oh my god, how stunning is this? But I'm gonna talk more about that in the next video. This is just a quick guide to Kazakhstan. All right, onto a couple more things that I must tell you about. Firstly, the food. Let me give you a warning, you probably don't wanna go if you're a vegan or even a vegetarian. Vegetarians should probably be okay. Vegans, I'm not sure you're gonna to do too well in, in Kazakhstan. The local delicacy is horse meat. For me personally, I love horses and I didn't eat it. I couldn't eat that and I don't eat much meat anyway. Um, so I did stay away from that, but be warned that that is a local delicacy and you will see that on a lot of menus. The second thing to warn you about is you will be fed until you cannot eat anymore. They will feed you so well and they will keep bringing the food. So be warned, you're gonna eat a lot in Kazakhstan. And finally, one of the most amazing things that I found was that sometimes at restaurants it turns into a bit of an ad hoc disco between courses. Now we first experienced this in Turkestan whereby we were just sat there having dinner and then suddenly the DJ starts pumping this loud cheesy club music and everybody got up and had a bookie and then suddenly three or four songs later the music stops, sit back down and everyone's just sort of chatting normally and eating their main course. That's a bit bizarre. We also had an experience like that in Nino. I find that the restaurants can be like their clubs. Nino is in Almaty, but that was brilliant. Like we were sat there having food, there was entertainment, there was a ballet dancer, there was live music, sit back down, eat a bit of food, have a couple of drinks, then the dance floor started and the party went on late. The nightlife in Kazakhstan, in Almaty in particular, is really good. You can tell it's got a really good vibe. Um, Obviously being on a short trip and being on a work trip, we didn't have quite as much time to explore and to stay out late as I would have liked. But next time for sure, I'm gonna do an Almaty city guide. Give me a thumbs up or a comment if you wanna see the city guide. All right, let me finish off with the people and the safety. I found this one of the safest places I've ever felt. Walking around in general, uh, nobody was really too bothered by us as tourists. Bearing in mind there's been very few tourists going to Kazakhstan in the last 18 months. Uh, we weren't hassled uh, and I would say it's a really safe place obviously. I can't speak from a female, a solo female perspective but I think my suggestion is it's a really safe place to visit. Um, and the people were lovely, very open, very welcoming, very friendly, happy if you want to take pictures of them. I don't do too much of that myself but if you, for, for the people in our group that did want to take photos of locals that was absolutely fine and as long as you're respectful um, of their place, of their home, you're going to be very very welcomed in Kazakhstan and I was blown away by some of the hospitality. I was also asked quite a bit about how expensive it is. Now in general, it's really quite cheap. You can get a, a beer for a pound or two, or a dollar or two, I suppose it's quite similar these days. Um, and you can get hotels 
and guest houses and homestays that really spread across the budget sort of spectrum. We stayed in a really nice sort of five star hotel, the Rixus. The Rixus Hotel in Turkestan and Almaty which was absolutely stunning but I appreciate not everybody is going to want to stay somewhere like that. I would love to, to, to do a homestay where you get the local family and the home cooked meal. You can even stay in traditional yurt so I'll definitely explore that route but you can find budget hotels and you can do your whole trip in Kazakhstan on a very healthy budget. Another point worth mentioning is the weather. It gets very hot in summer, as high as 40 degrees and very cold in the winter. So the best time to visit if you want to go hiking and exploring is probably from around May to September. And of course, if you want to go skiing, go in the winter. The Shimbulak uh, Ski Resort has snow from November uh, until May. My final tip for Kazakhstan is to get the Aerolo app. Now, I'm not sponsored by them or anything, but this is a lifesaver when it comes to getting a digital SIM card in countries where your SIM won't work. Rather than go running around and finding an actual physical SIM, you can just jump on some Wi-Fi, buy some data, for Kazakhstan, for example, it was seven pounds for five gigabytes, and that lasted me the whole week with using Wi-Fi as well. So it's dead, dead cheap, and I can give you three dollars with my little link below. Have a look in the description and uh, follow that link. I really recommend that for most countries. So there you have it. I can't recommend Kazakhstan enough. Honestly, one of the most diverse landscapes you'll ever see. Incredible people. Relatively cheap. Um, just a brilliant country to travel around in general. My trip was too short and I will for sure be going back next year. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Of course, pop any questions in the comments below. Give it a little thumbs up if you liked it. Thank you for watching. It's great to be back and happy travels.